So OpenAI is updating its text generating AI models. That's GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 in the face of what is increasing competition in the generative AI market. And we're going to be taking a look at what those updates are and what they mean. So let's get to it. So here we are on the OpenAI blog and they're talking about these updates and they're quite significant updates. No, it's not about GPT-5 or the next model they're working on, but these are iterative updates, but they're quite big updates compared to other updates that we've had. So basically here, OpenAI is updating its text generating AI models, as I said, GPT-3.5 Turbo, which is the sort of the cheaper version, the kind of ev version for every day, and GPT-4, which is a slightly more sophisticated uh, version and can do a little bit more. These new versions of these models uh, have a function called function calling. So they, they're adding a level of function calling, which is aimed at developers to help describe programming functions to the AI models for them to create necessary code. So this is obviously a massive help to developers who use ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, et cetera, in their applications, which means for you and me, we're going to see GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 integrated in more and more apps and tools, being able to do much more sophisticated thing because of this function calling. As I've just said there, new function calling capability in the chat completions API. They've got updated and more steerable versions of GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo. So basically these are larger context windows. So for instance, there's a new 16K context version of GPT-3.5. So originally, one of the reasons you might not want to use GPT 3.5 Turbo, even though it's sort of cheaper to use than version 4, is that it's context window. So what it remembers that it's talking about or what you can ask it in terms of the amount of text you can put in is much smaller. But there's a new 16K context version of GPT 3.5 Turbo versus the standard 4K version. So 4 times more context in GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now, obviously, the more text you put in, the more tokens you're going to use. But they've thought about that as well. There's a 75% cost reduction on their state-of-the-art embeddings model and a 25% cost reduction on input tokens. So effectively, the amount of text that you're putting in for GPT 3.5 Turbo. So then it breaks down. So this is an example of the function calling here. Developers can now describe functions. So if their apps are calling on their API is connected to GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo and these versions and the model have the model intelligently choose to out, how to output a JSON or a programming object containing arguments to call those functions. So for instance, here you can convert queries such as email Anya to see if she wants to get a coffee next Friday and it can call on a function. So a bit like some of the apps that are already in uh, ChatGPT4 that you can use, some of the apps that you can utilize in there, but you can program it into your app to basically program to send an email, tell it what's to do. Or for instance here, what's the weather like in Boston? And then there's an example here. What's the weather in Boston right now? So this is if you're building an app, an app using ChatGPT. Call the model with functions and the user's input. So this is what the request would look like using OpenAI uh, if you've got that app. And you basically create a function instructing it what to do to work out the location, get the temperature and all of that. So if the user puts in what is the weather like in Boston, it knows to call on the function to find out what the weather's like and then the, deliver a response in a form that it would understand. And then you can use that model response to call your API. So your API might be the weatherapi.com. And then that API will send back the response. So again, this is the programming telling you what the weather is. The final response that it then gives out, if you're using the app, if you're using ChatGPT in your app that you've created would be the weather in Boston is currently sunny with a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. So basically you can create a function, it knows to call on that function, and then it will output 
that function and then translate the results of that function into natural language for your user. Both models, so ChatGPT4 and the new ChatGPT4 32K version, which is going to be available soon, will include these same improvements. But of course, ChatGPT4 32K, which isn't rolling out to everybody yet, but basically allow you to have much larger responses than you had before. And we see the same increase here on ChatGPT 3.5, which is going for 4K response to a 16K response. Now, the ChatGPT 4 at 32K here uh, is being rolled out. It's not available for everyone yet. There is a wait list. I have applied for that wait list to try the GPT 4 model with 32K. And as soon as we can try it, I'll let you guys know. But this is great news because you're going to be able to not only put in much larger context, you can put in like much larger text documents to sort of get summarized or analyzed. But equally, the output and what it remembers of that output is going to increase dramatically. If you put in a large document, the problem is it can't remember all of that document when it outputs the response. So this is going to kind of really help that process. So when are we going to get this? This is going to be happen basically applications using the stable model names GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 0.4 and GPT 4 32K will automatically be upgraded to new models listed above on the 27th of June. Now, obviously, as I said, the bigger the context windows, the more tokens you're effectively using, but they've reduced the amount. Chat GPT 3.5 Turbo includes the same function calling as GPT 4, as well as more reliable steerability via the system message. Two features that allow developers to guide the model's response more effectively. You're getting four times the context length, as I said here, at twice the price. So 0.003p per 1000 input tokens and 0.004 per 1k output tokens. So that's input and output. And 16k context means the model can now support 20 pages of text in a single request. So that is significantly more. You can basically cram in loads more text and context into your requests, which thus allows much more deeper analysis of documents and stuff like that. As they continue to make the model more efficient, the systems more efficient, they're going to be passing those savings onto the developers as well. Basically, they're reducing the cost of tokens here by 75%, where you're putting in lots of text, you know, or your app that you're developing requires lots of text input, the price is going to come down. Um, and again, for GPT 3.5 Turbo, the most popular one, they're reducing the cost of input tokens by 25%. So even though they're increasing the amount of tokens you can put in, in terms of the context or the questions that you ask or the information you want analyzed, the cost is coming down. And GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K will be priced at 0.03 P per 1K input and 0.04 per 1K output, which is not really much at all. So those are the big changes. I don't have a lot to show you, but these are quite significant changes that are coming along to the app. Anyway, I just thought I'd update you on the exciting iterations that are coming to ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo and ChatGPT 4, probably making what is the best AI tool out there even better. And they'll continue to improve ChatGPT 4 and make these iterations rather than quickly jump to chat GPT 5 and 6, which is in the works, but they're more concentrating on improving and developing the existing tools and getting more apps, getting more developers on board, giving functionality to developers to kind of give us even more apps and tools to use, uh, which is sort of changing the face of the way that AI is becoming more and more accessible to everybody. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then please hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you're new to my channel, do me the great honor of hitting that subscribe button, toggling that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with content just like this. And talking of content just like this, 
why don't you check out my videos over here? I think you'll find them interesting. These ones here. Thank you.